church right there. He is the temple Amen. right there. Ain't that what he said in the Bible? <coughs> we're going to all serve him. The Bible says all his servants shall serve him. And we're going to sing psalms and hymns to the Lord right there. We're going to praise God. We're going to enjoy the fruit of our labors. Let's think about that. <coughs> it says in verse 1 of chapter 21, and I saw, I might not read the whole thing, and maybe I will, I don't know. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. Notice that. This is talking about heaven. This is a city that God has prepared. At this time, if you follow it in order, the old heaven and the old earth is gone right there. This is a city. And I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He's preparing us a place. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. The Lamb, that's Jesus. God Almighty, the Father, is going to be there too. And guess what? That throne is right in the middle of all this. So just like one man said, somebody comes through those gates and says, where's the throne at? I want to see this. Said, well, about, you know, 700 miles that away. <laughs> 700 miles that away. <laughs> Take uh, Glory Road and the one that's paid with gold, you know. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and, I, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people. And God Himself shall be with them and be their God. Now I want you to notice something. Outside of these gates, there's no unsaved person out there. But the way it, it kind of looks, sometimes you think, well, there's still unsaved people out there. No, He just used that in a figure right there. The unsaved folks are judged they're in the lake of fire burning where they'll be forever and ever. And I'll never rejoice over nobody going to hell. You know what I mean? I don't even want to see the devil go there. But he's going one day. Just like God promised. The Bible said the devils believe and they tremble. They know they're in. They done saw the Lord. They done walked and saw the power of God. And they believe in God. But they don't believe in their heart. Under salvation right there. That's what it means when the Bible says even the devils believe. Just because you believe in your mind, don't, that's not good enough. The devils even believe in their mind. But it's when somebody believes in their heart. That means you give your life to Jesus right there. You turn from your wicked ways, you just give yourself to the Lord with all your heart. That's when He saves a person. Verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Notice that. I love that song. There'll be no tears there. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And we're not going to remember those that went to hell. And I'm glad we're not right there. God's going to erase them from our minds. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for the thing, these, thing, these words are true and faithful. Amen. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. That means the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of life freely. I got thirsty one day, and I cried out to Jesus. And he gave me that fountain of living water on the inside, springing up the everlasting life like he talks about in the book of John. Said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He's been my dad ever since he saved me. I've always felt that connection to the Father. This is my Father. I've never went to a point where I said, Okay, I got unsaved, and he's not my Father no more. No. I've always felt that Heavenly Father right there. My spirit cried out, Abba Father, meaning my Father. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. How do you overcome? It's what the scriptures say about it, not what man says about it. How do you overcome? I'm going to tell you. Even your faith, 
That's what it says in the Bible. We overcome through the blood of the Lamb. When you get that blood applied to the lintel post of your heart, you've overcame the world right there. And what that simply means is you died to this world in your soul. And on the inside, you don't know nothing about this world. You don't know nothing about sin. Sin cannot get in. You died to sin. Right there. You're overcoming the world. That's what, what it means. This ain't something you've got to work on. I'm, I'm, I'm eventually overcome. No. When you got saved, you overcome this world. It's plain and simple. <coughs> I got the Scriptures in here to tell me that type of stuff. You know? I go by the Scriptures. Amen. Not what some man told me. Amen. God showed me I had eternal life and no man showed me that. I used to be one of them preachers who thought you can get unsaved. And I preached that. But one day the Lord set me down at my mother-in-law's table by myself. And He showed me in Romans 6 I had eternal life and I couldn't get unsaved. Changed my whole outlook on the Bible once I saw that. It wasn't no man taught me that. Because I was against people that taught once saved, always saved. I was against them. Because I didn't believe it. I thought it was, i got to keep myself saved. I'm kept by the power of God. <laughs> That's what the Scripture says. Kept, look over there in Peter. Kept by the power of God. Woo! Kept by the power of God. Lord, the Lord don't bear witness to a lie. <laughs> kept by the power of God. Amen. Sealed unto the whole day of redemption. Thank God for that. <laughs> so he says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, notice that, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, if you don't believe in the Son of God, you're a liar. That's what he says. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstones, which is the second death. What's that talking about? That's talking about unsaved folks right there. If you're unsaved, no matter how good you are, you're considered a sinner in the eyes of the Lord. You're part of that group right there. You're part of that group. And you want, you'll be into the lake of fire and you won't be able to have no part in this city. It says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come up hither and and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he, the bride, the Lamb's wife, is us, by the way. Say, folks. And we're going to be garnished with white robes. That's the righteousness of the saints. And Jesus is going to feed us at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We already married Christ, but we're going to have a marriage supper up in heaven. He talks about this thing. Now, I don't know when this is going to take place. If you read it in its context, it's going to take place probably during the Great Tribulation because the church will be gone during that time and we'll be in heaven. And Jesus is going to serve us right there. So He says in verse 10, And He carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Y'all know this is the only picture we got in the Bible that shows us a little bit about heaven. The Bible actually speaks very little about heaven. And you know, it took me years to realize that. I thought, well, there was something somewhere in there. I realized this is the only place. And it's like a little picture that God just took a little picture and let us see it real fast. You know what I mean? He just let us see it and pulled it away. But every once in a while, He'll make it come alive to you. This is far greater than we can really imagine about heaven. And he, verse, let me read verse 10 again. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. I used to think this city was on earth one day that God was bringing it down. But I really don't believe that right there. I just believe John was in a trance. The Bible says... He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and he become in a trance. And God told him, took him up this high mountain right here. We don't know where that mountain was. We don't even know if it was on earth. You know what I'm talking about? 
He took him up on that mountain. That's the mountain of the Lord. And let him see this come down out of heaven. That, that made me think, okay, there's heaven where God is now, but He's going to take this city out of heaven, like I told you all before. That, that's a, there's a sign right there. I believe He's going to clean up heaven one day. Y'all remember the Scripture said that the heavens are unclean even in the sight of the Lord. Even the heavens. Think about that. I believe God's preparing this city because of the saints. Notice He said, the 12 apostles right there. He talked about that and I'll get to that. He prepared this. He's preparing this city either now or He's going to later on. I'm not exactly sure. I don't believe this city really exists right now. But I believe this was made because... After Jesus died, I believe this was made. Or it's going to be made. Not in the Old Testament. I don't believe this existed right here. This had all the stripes of the New Testament right here if you look at it. Somebody said, well this city's been existing ever since heaven. I don't think so. Because the twelve apostles is part of that. And the, and the children of Israel, the 144,000 is part of that. Them come later on. See what I'm talking about? He named it after things that happened later on. <coughs> so he says in verse 11, Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like unto a jasper stone clear as crystal. Now I don't know exactly how a jasper stone looks, but this was the best jasper around. All these stones that he made here, this was the best. These, these streets that was made of pure goat, this was the best goat he ever made right here. I believe that. The pearly gates. You know, best pearls. Most expensive pearls. He says, And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes, are the children of Israel. Right there. So every gate was one in one tribe. And there was on this wall there was three gates. On that wall there was three gates. Now notice this wall is one thousand five hundred miles this way. So these must have been some pretty big gates. And he said these gates wasn't shut at all by day. They wasn't shut. Think about that. There was an angel standing there. Now, I don't know why God has to have an angel standing there, but He did. Think about that. There's some things we just don't know. It says in verse 13, On the east three gates, on the east are three gates. Let me put the R in there. Are three gates. On the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. So there was 12 gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. I believe that was just sectioned off like each wall had three foundations and they represented something different right there. <clears throat> he said, The wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Peter, John, Matthias, not Judas Iscariot because he was of the wicked one, the devil. Matthias' name is on one of those foundations. You think about that. 